Hello everyone, this is chapter 10, production and cost estimation. Managers use estimates of production and cost functions to make decisions on output, pricing, hiring and investment. Okay, so in chapters 8 and 9, we learn basic theories of production and costs. In this chapter, we will learn statistical techniques to estimate production and cost in the short run. So again, the focus will be on short run cost and production function. So in the short run, managers make pricing, hiring, production and output decisions. In the long run, it's more of an investment in the plant, factory size and equipment decisions. Okay, so in this part, we will focus on setting up short run cubic production function. Okay, so that's what we're doing in this part. And these are the learning objectives of this chapter. So let's talk about empirical production function. An empirical production function is the mathematical form of the production function that we are to estimate. Okay, so there's a long run production function in which all inputs are variable. It looks like this quantity output as a function of labor and capital. In the long run, you can adjust both of them. In the short run, short run production function, uh, we assume at least one input fixed. So we assume capital is fixed, right? So it looks like this output as a function of labor and a fixed level of capital. It, because the capital is fixed, you can actually write it as a function G of L, labor only. So empirical production function specification. There are many different types of production functions. Okay. So one example is, for instance, we have something called Cobb-Douglas Cobb -Douglas production function. Uh, it looks like this. Quantity. Okay. A. L raised to the power alpha. K raised to the power 1 minus alpha. So these alphas and 1 minus alpha are the contribution of the input, labor or capital in the output. A is considered as technological change or any shocks to the system. So to estimate this, for instance, Cobb-Douglas type production function, you need to take the logarithms, natural logarithms of both sides. But we are not going to focus on that. We are going to focus on another type of empirical specification. We are going to focus on cubic production function. So the short run, we said we are going to uh, study short run production function because it's pertinent to output pricing and hiring decisions in the short run. But it is though short run production function is derived from long run production function. Cubic form long run production function looks like this. Q, A, K, capital raised to the power 3, L, labor raised to the power 3, plus B, capital raised to the power 2, and labor raised to the power 2. So it's important to note here that A and B are parameters to be estimated. Capital and labor are variables. And these are the powers, right? So the name cubic comes from the highest power polynomial, which is the third power, cubic form long run production function. So these, this cubic form long run production function has desirable properties. Number one, both labor and capital required for positive level of output. Okay, if either of them are zero, you can get only zero levels of output. And also, this production function produces convex isoquants and they actually manifest diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. So the isoquants look pretty good. So capital and labor, right? This is the isoquant. It's going to have convex to the origin, origin is here, convex to the origin and diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Okay, so how do we turn long run, this long run cubic form production uh, function to a short run one? Okay, so the short run cubic production function looks like this. Oh, what happened to K's? What happened to little a's? Don't be worried. We just substitute them. So we're holding the capital constant, right, in the short run. Short run cubic pr production function is derived as follows. Okay, you grab the long run cubic production function, right, because the capital is fixed. You put bars on it. So you have a k bar raised to the power 3. We're going to call it 
capital A. Little a, k raised to the power 2, we are going to call this capital B. So you just transformed, transformed long run production function to short run production function. So k bar here is a number just like a, b, c, you know, it's a parameter now. It's just going to be a number. So we're incorporating those in a capital A and B. Okay. So this is what we have properties of short run cubic production function. So let's learn about average product. It's really easy to derive average product. Average product is simply Q divided by labor. So I'm going to grab this Q substitute it here. Okay. Let's just do it. A L raised to the power three plus B L raised to the power two divided by right average product of labor L. So this becomes a L raised to the power three, just the same denominator B L raised to the power two divided by L. So what you have is a L raised to the power two plus B L exactly what we found. Okay. So this is how it's found average product. And next let's talk about marginal product in marginal product calculations in the book. It uses Delta Q over Delta L, but this is used whenever we are calculating change one unit, whole unit. We are going to use this D's to signify it first to signify first derivatives. Okay. So what does it mean? Marginal product is change in output with respect to change in labor. So this is the first derivative of this function, production function with respect to labor. How do we take the first derivative? So a is a constant. It comes out of derivative uh, process as itself. It's a constant number. L raised to the power three is three. So I'm taking first derivative of Q with respect to L. So L raised to the power three, whenever you see the third power, right? You, right? If I'm taking first derivative of this one, three X raised to the power five. Okay. D Y over D X. I'm just reviewing derivatives. This power five goes up front three times five, three times five X raised to the power five minus one, lower the power by one. This is how you take derivative. So first derivative will be 15 x raised to the power four of three x raised to the power five. So with the same token, I have L raised to the power three. So three goes up front L three minus two, oops, or three minus one. I apologize. So it's going to be two. My brain kind of moved fast here. B right. L raised to the power two power comes up front two L raised to the power two minus one. It's going to be one. So as a result, I get from here. 3a l raised to the power 2 and 2b 2b l itself okay so if you have any problems uh, i would highly recommend you go watch some videos on taking a uh, first derivative of a function it's not that hard and this is all you're going to need in this case so average product again you don't need to memorize anything just you as long as you know how to divide this by l you got your average product in all cases marginal product you just take first derivative of q with respect to l again i'm doing it 3a l raised to the power 2 plus 2 goes up front 2b l lower the power by 1 1. so let's take a look at the shape of these average product and marginal product curves the beauty about short run cubic production function is that it gives us not only really good looking isoquants that are convex to the origin and it you literally need positive levels of labor and capital to produce something but also it gives us beautiful looking uh, marginal product and average product curves upside down u-shaped average product curve upside down u-shaped marginal product curve that cuts the average product at its maximum point couple of more things this is labor and these are the costs measured in dollars okay so a couple of things you have the maximum point of your marginal product curve at negative b over 3a and marginal pro uh, marginal product curve peak at a lower quantity than where average product curve peaks 
okay so that's going to be negative b over 2a okay so in the next part we are going to learn how to derive these and we're going to continue with properties of short run cubic production function so one last thing marginal product of labor begins to diminish right beyond beyond lm units so diminishing marginal product sets in at this level so we'll, we're interested in calculating this quantity of labor average product of labor begins to diminish beyond la units so we are also interested in finding exactly this point okay i will see you in part two